Today on Tootie's Track Analysis, we have the track of the day for January 31st, Flint by Hank Is Me and Scofus. Flint is a grass track and it also contains some small road sections and a brief transition made from plastic. The track has a GPS, a single finish line, no speed checks, and no apparent skips or cuts. With one slightly challenging transition, I would say the track's difficulty is slightly harder than average, rating it a 5.5 out of 10. I completed the track with a time of 43.511, which was 8 hundredths faster than the author medal time of 43.598. Overall, I thought Flint was just a well-made track. It flowed very smoothly and had no major flaws. With that said, I give Flint a plus plus rating. For today's analysis and comparison, we are using the current world record ghost, which was driven by Thomas Jean, and they had a 42.483, and this is 1.028 ahead of my personal best. So there's not a ton of variation to the start of this track. We'll take slightly different lines, but ultimately end up near the same spot for the first transition. To start out entering this, you want to be kind of right down the middle as we are here. Then advancing a little bit, we'll see you want to take it right up close to the dirt edge. And then once you exit here, you want to be kind of right down the middle with a little bit of rightward momentum so you can land very early and low on the next section. For the upcoming downhill left-hand turn, you want to remain on an inside line. Here I am wide, and the reason why I went wide is because I felt like any time I tried to take this inside line that the world record does, I would lose a gear. So I ended up usually staying wide here just to maintain that gearing. This different line here also resulted in me having my second biggest speed and time loss at this location from checkpoint to checkpoint, losing a quarter of a second and eight speed. After this turn, however, we'll end up on again a similar line into this next transition in which you want to jump down the middle and end up on the lower right side. For the turn, you want to enter low and stay as low as you can through the entirety of the turn. On uh, the exit of the wall ride, you want to end up somewhere near the middle of the track so you can start making this left hand turn. And while our lines here seem very similar, I am a little higher than the world record currently is. This little difference is massive on the exit. As you can see right now, we're both sliding a little bit. Our wheel width are about the same width apart on the skid marks. But moving forward a little bit, we'll see that the world record straightens out and we'll begin to speed slide up the hill. I'll go over the effects of that at the next checkpoints, but right here for this plastic jump, you want to be kind of flat, maybe take a little bit more to the right than I did here, because your car will tilt a little bit to the left and get you a little bit smoother landing than I did. But yeah, you want to be pretty flat here on the jump to make this transition. You'll see I'm a little too flat, land a little too early, and get a little bit of airtime here after bouncing. And here we are at the next checkpoint. From the last checkpoint to this one, I went from 13 speed ahead to 5 behind. And this 18 speed was by far the most I lost, and it also costed me another 3 tenths of a second, putting me now behind by about 7 tenths overall. For the upcoming wall ride, you want to enter mid to low, but not too low here, as you will very much struggle getting a clean exit. Again, on the exit here, you want to just scrape by this dirt piece as close as you can to get it. Even overlapping it a tiny bit is not the biggest deal. Just, uh, again, if you go too low on the entrance, you will have a very hard time getting a clean exit as you will drive over a ton of that dirt. A little more on the exit here, I go very wide, I don't have a good explanation as to why I did this. I do gain a little bit of extra speed back, but overall it's not worth the time that it took me to get that extra speed back, because I'll lose 0.17 more seconds. And moving forward a little bit more into the final turn on this one, very similar to an earlier turn, you want to remain on the inside line here, stay as close to that edge as possible, very very easy though to slip off that inside line and end up falling off into the little dirt section and losing lots of speed, so just be very careful with that inside line. But after the turn is over you have a little bit of time to get some wiggles or speed slides into the finish. So I struggled a lot with consistency on this one today, with some of the sloped wall ride sections being easy to take too low and fall off, and the plastic transition was also tough. Still a very nice track today, and I'm happy to get another author medal, even though there's been an effort to make them easier. 
But that'll do it for today's episode. If you enjoyed, please like the video and subscribe. Check the description for links to my Twitch and Discord if you're interested in joining or following those. And be sure to check out all the other track analysis videos already out on the channel. Uh, but yeah, that'll do it for today. I will see you guys tomorrow for the next track analysis.